hit this next segment and I wanna answer some questions that I was asked about my dating video. So if you if you're just tuning in, um, welcome welcome to the video. Uh, we just talked about Nick Cannon birth control. Love to hear from your, your response. Love to hear your comments. Love to respond and interact there. Um, but we just talked about Nick Cannon, and now we're going to be talking about we're moving into the discussion about marriage, singleness, dating in that realm, the relationship, romance realm. Uh, one of the questions that I received, really these questions I received from a dear friend of mine who had asked, um, after watching my video on dating, had asked um, a few questions. And I thought that they would be helpful for all of us to think about, to engage. I love, as I mentioned, I love talking about theology. And theology provides, um, theology talks about all of life. All of life, we all have to have a theological perspective. Um, it just depends on whether we're bad at theology or whether we're good at theology where we have a, a proper understanding of what God has said in, in his word and has revealed in his word so that we can put on good theology glasses and look at the world rightly as God wants us to look at it. So one of the questions that I received uh, from a friend of mine is, should I be debt free before I get married? Now I want to ask all of you, do you think that someone who wants to be married um, is unsure maybe if they're ready to be married because they're in debt. Do you think that they should get married? Go ahead and put it in the comments section um, below. I, I'd love to see what your response is to that. Do you think that someone who is um, wants to be married but is in debt, do you think that they should get married? And this question came about because in my last video I talked about there are some requirements that you should uh, meet before you are before you're prepared to be married, and b really before you enter into the dating world. And I had mentioned um, having a job. Um, I had mentioned you know being committed to a church, being under a pastor, um, and, you know loving Jesus, of course, all of those things. So it, you can also refer to my previous video um, if you have you want to get more in detail about what we had talked about when I was talking about dating. Really, the idea was about redeeming dating, not simply. Um, not simply just stop dating altogether, but the idea is redeeming dating, dating with, with the principles that God provides in his word. Although there was no such thing as dating in the Bible, dating didn't exist back then, didn't come about till the early 1900s, late 1800s. So, um, but I want to know, should I be debt free before I get married? Now, just as a personal uh, story, um, and maybe you all relate to this, I was in debt before before I got married, my wife and I were, were in debt. We had just graduated college and we were in financial, we were in student loan debt. And I can't stand student loans. One day I will be free from them by the grace of God. Um, so I just graduated college. My wife and I had graduated college in 2015 and we were preparing to be married and getting ready for our wedding, and we were we were in debt. Um, but that was about our only debt other than my wife's um, car, um, car loan that we had, but that was about our only debt at the time. Now, now I want you all to think about this, um, because I've known people who have said, I don't want to be married because I got too much debt. And I actually think that if you are in debt, and you marry someone and they got a job, they will help you kill your debt. So it actually works beneficially to you if you get married to someone because when you when you become one, their money is no longer just their money, but it's our money. It's no longer about me, it's about we. So you, their debt, um, if, they're, if they have debt, now it becomes your debt to help and kill. And, and even if we look at this in a gospel perspective, Jesus loved his bride, the church. God had prepared a bride for him. God prepared his people. Um, and Jesus comes to pay the debt of his bride, of his people. It wasn't Jesus' debt to pay, but Jesus comes and he pays the debt. And that, that's the good part of the good news of the gospel, is that Jesus comes, he pays a debt that's not his, 
I accumulated a debt of sin so high that I can never, ever, and I won't ever be able to overcome. Um, no amount of good works, no nothing that I can do good enough will, um, will um, give me a space or a place in heaven. I'm not good, and because we've all sinned, um, Romans 3 teaches that there's no one good. We None of us are able to inherit a righteousness before God to be seen as perfect and pleasing before God in and of ourselves because we have a debt called sin, and that's, that debt must be paid either by ourselves in a place called hell or it's paid by Jesus on the cross. And so the good news is that God becomes a man, and he takes on the debt in our place for all those who believe in him. Their debt is now cleared. They have a new life and a free life. Their debt has been paid. So um, should you be debt-free before you get married? I don't believe so. And I, and I believe that if you're in debt, um, you're still perfectly fine to start dating and to meet someone who meets the qualifications of someone who should be prepared to be married. You know, they love Jesus. They're a member of a church. They got a job. You know, those things, as I mentioned in my previous video, so no, uh, you don't need to be debt-free to get married. That's my opinion, and that's my perspective on this. And um, we're going to go and switch into the next topic in a few moments. Hey everyone, um, thanks for tuning in. Um, if, if you have, if you just tuned in or if you've tuned in just a few moments ago, uh, thanks for tuning in. Go ahead and give this video a like. Also, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're getting value from this. Um, we've been talking about relationships. We're talking about birth control. We're talking about Nick Cannon and his view of birth control. We're talking about the gospel as it relates to dating, singleness, and marriage. So many things we're talking about. Um, and I had mentioned that I had received a few questions from a dear friend of mine about dating. And uh, so this next question, I want to ask all of you, go ahead and put it in the comment section below your answer to it. Um, and if you agree to the, to the things that I've been saying, go ahead and put an amen in the comment section, like the video. Um, but the next question that we are discussing is, should I desire to be married if God doesn't guarantee it? Um, should I desire to be married if God doesn't guarantee it? So should you? Should you desire to be married if God doesn't guarantee that you will be married? You will be married. Um, but I, I want to turn your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 is a good passage for us to, to look at and observe. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, let me go ahead and... Um, Shrink it a little bit so that you can see all of the words there. A little more. Okay. And I like having, I like having the Greek translation right under it. Um, just, just in case I want to talk a little bit about Greek, I enjoy doing Greek. I enjoy reading Greek. Um, it's part of my uh, daily devotional where I translate a verse of Greek, one verse. Uh, right now I'm in Ephesians. Nevertheless, we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. It says, Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sex relations with a woman. But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. The husband should give, his, his, give to his wife her conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband. So we're just going to go ahead and stop there just for a few moments. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 it's good. It's good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. And, and what Paul is talking about here is sleeping outside of marriage. You're not supposed to do that. Flee sexual immorality. God doesn't want that for your life. It, there's a spiritual element to sex, not just a physical transaction, but it, it's, it should be done within the context of marriage. That's glorifying the God. That's what God created for. And it's amazing and it's awesome. Um, but, if, but, if you're, but if you're dating and you are single and you are not married, Paul's saying, it's good for you not to have sex relations. It's good for you not to do that. It's good. It's not bad. Some of you guys think that God's a killjoy and God's just trying to take your joy. God's just kind of trying to take your happiness, and that is not true. Um, it's good. And then it says, 1 Corinthians 7, but because of the temptation to sexual morality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. So now, if you desire, if you desire to be, um, to, um, 
experience sexual relationship with somebody. You desire that. You need to pursue somebody for the purpose and intentionality of marriage. You need to. So um, it, it's a good thing. It's not necessarily like a bad thing to have a desire to, to have sex, but it needs to be channeled. You need to practice self-control. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians, one of the fruits of the Spirit, self-control. You need to practice self-control for a season and prepare to be married and find someone to be married. Um, go ahead and put it in the comment section below. Um, if you agree with this, go ahead and put amen. And furthermore, furthermore, I, I want to make, and an, so the, again, the question, should I desire to be married if God doesn't guarantee it? God do also doesn't guarantee, I'm going to go back to my main screen, God also doesn't guarantee that your friend or your family member is going to be saved. God does not guarantee that. He doesn't guarantee um, that the people that we love are going to be saved. Now, does that mean that we need to stop desiring for them to be saved? Does that mean that we have to stop desiring or stop praying for their salvation? That they would come to know Jesus and, and uh, be saved from God's wrath from, um, in, in hell and, and receive new life now and eternal life here now in the promise of an inheritance in heaven with him forever that we would get God? Is it wrong to desire those things and pray for those things? Absolutely not. We're actually encouraged to pray for those things. So my encouragement would be to you, if you desire to be married, I would encourage you in the same way that you pray for people to be saved, pray that God would send you someone and pray that God would prepare you and do something in your life in this moment, in this season of life, in the waiting. That God would work through you. That God would sanctify you further and deeper so that you may conform to the image of his son. So no, um, I, the answer to your question, sh should, you should you desire to be married? Yes, you still should desire to be married because it's a good thing. Marriage is a good thing. And if you desire it, pray for it. God can make this happen. God can send somebody to you. And so I just want to give you hope in that. If you're single and you are a dating, um, I would just encourage, um, I would just encourage you to continue to pray for that. As you pray for people to be saved, continue to pray. God is a father who loves his children and wants to provide the best for his children. And God hears you. God hears you in your singleness. And God can send you somebody. Um, we're going to go and get into the last topic in just a few moments. We're at the last topic. Thank you for joining the 